Hello, Please. everyone. Welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. I'm here with two queens, icons, and legends. I'm so over the moon on a gas tire and Rachel Dratch. How are you both doing today? Thank Good. You for Good to see you. Us legends. That meant a lot. And speaking of queens, I just want to show you, I got festive and I've had this shirt. It's a share riding a candy cane. <laughs> Um, and amazing. I, I've wanted to wear it forever, and I felt like you guys yeah. will get it. You go, you'll perfect. get it. You, you pick the right audience. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, oh. I believe in love, uh, life after love, love after life. <laughs> my head also. I'm looking at my Zoom. I feel like my head looks so big because I got the Santa hat over the headphones. Look I look great. Looks good. You look great. Everything's looking good. And you've got, a, you've got a festive nod of a little garland Some behind in the you. Back. It was perfect. Yeah. Look, ladies, I love a holiday movie. So I was so thrilled. Clusterfunk Christmas on Comedy Central. I loved watching it. It had all the tropes that I love from like a Hallmark movie. I'm a Hallmark movie junkie. Good. I love the Lifetime movies, love the Hallmark. And I've been dying for a parody of those for years. So I was so thrilled that you both gave it to us. You're both so funny in it and amazing. Uh, talk to me about like, how did the concept come up? Okay, first of all, may I thank you before we begin for introducing us that way because I think we wrote the movie for you, Danny. I feel that way. Clearly, clearly. No, I mean, we, we feel that way. <laughs> Actually, we were hoping that a trope lover would enjoy it. Um, uh, we, were, we were, you know, fans as much as the next guy. We love to watch them. We love to hate watch them. We uh, like a, a sentimental feeling. And um, we had been looking for something to write together, frankly, for a while. And um, our my friend, Danielle, Von Zernick, who's our other producer, had uh, has actually produced several Lifetime and Hallmark Christmas movies herself. So it was a kind of a meeting of the minds of like, how can no one's done the parody of this yet? This this is so ripe for parody. Rachel and I want to take a crack at it, and luckily uh, she believed in it, and so we we sold it. So it was a pretty pretty fun collaborative experience, and um, and like you said, like we sort of wanted to lean into the structure as perfectly as possible to make it an, a, an impeccable parody. We didn't want to just kind of make fun of Hallmark. We wanted like uber observations. That makes sense. Well, yeah, it does make sense. And it, it is works on so many levels because also I think I have another podcast where I analyze uh, Christmas movies and I've covered a lot of the Hallmark movies. And I think for fans of that specific network, they're going to find so many little things that they're like, oh yeah, that's that. And then yep. it also just works if people haven't seen these movies or they're just sort of general holiday movie fans. I think they're going to just laugh and have a good time. I really hope so. There's so many Easter eggs, if you will. I hate that expression, but that's really what they are. I mean, there's so many like we we deliberately threw a scene into the gazebo for the Hallmark people. We del we deliberately um, there, there's a lot of like there's a lot of sort of like inside baseball in terms of how crappily the movies are made and how they're always up in Canada. So there's a lot of sort of references to Canadian um, and accidental, and Canadian, accident, flag. accidental Canadian flags and things like that. And um, yeah, and just you know observations sort of about the you know gay bestie and observations about um, race and class of the movies that we tried to just kind of pepper in so that it was part of the larger romantic uh, story. So, so funny. Now, I, I, we're going to get back to Christmas movies, but one of my favorite things that the two of you have done is uh, on SNL, you guys did this uh, Housewives reunion with Andy. It was like oh all God. of the SNL yeah. ladies. Yeah. So fucking funny. And I wanted to know, <laughs> do you, either of you keep up with Bravo at all? Like, are you guys, do you guys watch any of that stuff? I've, Rachel. I've, I did. I've, I watched for a really long time. I've kind of fallen off. I think like, I don't know. I think when I had a kid, I kind of fell off the housewives a little bit, but um, do you watch it still all the time? Oh yeah. Yeah. I oh, watch oh, too yeah. much of it. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of crazy stuff. That's why I, I wanted to get your take. Cause there's like crazy oh, stuff. Shoot, a lot I'm of people. Not, no, it's I'm okay. I There's know, a lot of people going to jail. A lot of stuff. Happened. Oh yeah, because uh, Erica Jane, the, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, because I'm gonna do Watch What Happens Live too, and I feel like Andy really likes it. If you know the housewife, so I, yeah, I should. I should just start. Watching. Our friend okay. Emily Spivey, who wrote One Country, <laughs> definitely knows a lot too. She she sort of keeps us surprised. But I, I same thing. Like I really kind of lost after Teresa went to jail, actually, and um, that was sort of when I was I exited. But. I love, though, that I, I asked you if you know anything about Housewives, and you guys just mentioned Teresa going to jail, and Rachel, you're like, yeah, the Erica Jane lost stuff. Well, yeah. that's all like, over. <laughs> yeah, that's everywhere. <laughs> that's, exactly. just, that's, just being knowledgeable. that's just keeping up with current <laughs> events, that's basically. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I study the, you know, the infrastructure package and Erica Jane, yeah. and 
That's, in, a that's in my read, Yahoo feed. I'm a well-read, well-informed <laughs> citizen of the He's U.S. exactly right. She knows right. about the, the Paris, <laughs> Paris Accord and, and, of course, Erica James. You're like, yeah, oh, yeah, Erica Jane Clinton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, there's two movies that are in your both of your collections that I have to ask you about. They're, they're sort of hidden gems in my mind, and I feel like oh, nobody asks what? the two of you Don't about you it. Don't dare ask about Paul uh, Blart. Rachel Dratch, first, I'm going to ask you about Spring Breakdown, which I love Spring Breakdown. I know you you. co-wrote it. What can you tell me a story or or a memory about that that experience? Oh, my gosh. It was it was so fun to make. I mean, my friend Ryan Shiraki, it was um, his idea. And I sort of was like, like for this one, it was definitely co-writing from the beginning up. And that one, I was sort of like just getting my feet wet and writing. So. I helped with that one, like a lot of dialogue and stuff, because I've never been a good like plot person. But he was that the plot person for that movie. It was so fun, and um, uh, yeah, we were hoping it would go to theaters. We don't quite know what happened with that. So that's it. Always like, oh, Spring Breakdown. Like, but you can still <laughs> watch it nowadays. Everything streams. So where does so she? Check where does out. she air? Um, she airs. I don't know where she is right now, but you can. The gays. The gays have found it on the dark web. Like we've. Oh. We, we have it. Okay. We have okay. our copies. So www.gay.com. Yeah. Yeah. Dot dark web. <laughs> dot. Check me out. Yeah. I, I did that when <laughs> I was fourteen, <laughs> Anna, and it wasn't a pretty picture on oh, the no. family computer. No. Um, okay, way, Anna. What? Yes. Go ahead. No, what I was gonna say. Doing? By the way, be careful when you Google clusterfunk. <laughs> For real. Speaking of the dark web. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anna, the one I want to ask you about is The Women, another gay uh, classic with uh, Meg Ryan, who's one of my favorite actresses ever. Like, I'm obsessed with Meg Ryan. What do you remember about that experience, especially because it was an all-female cast, like every single, even extra, I believe, right? It was an all-female cast, and I love the the original of that movie so much, and I've watched it a lot. Um, It was... uh, it was it was frustrating because it was sort of at a moment where things couldn't get financed for women. I mean, it was a while ago now, right? It was like over 10 yeah, years. I think like 08. And it took her, yeah. And it took her a really long time to get it financed. And then she finally got it financed. And then it was, you know, everybody just talked about everybody's work on their faces. And so it was a little bit frustrating in that respect. Um, what I remember about it was that I played sort of like the, you know, chippy friend of Ava Mendez. And I, I do remember being so like when you meet a really truly beautiful person you cannot stop thinking about how beautiful they are like it's like a little bit ryan mcpartland in our movies like this he plays like the good looking he's like a hallmark star who and and tv comedy star who who plays the sort of other love interest in the movie but he's so symmetrical and cheyenne is like this too jackson where you just stare at their face like like it's like math you know like you're like i can't concentrate on words because your face is so distractingly symmetrical like everything is just mad and i remember her lip color was the color like her skin tone to her lip naturally without lipstick is the color that you if you were a makeup artist you would, she was so lovely but also so beautiful like it was just distracting it was a distracting to my craft you know you mentioned the conversation being all about like plastic surgery and stuff and i i always I remember that era was just such a tough time for the industry and particularly women. But it's like, if you look back now, I know a lot of the conversation was about Meg Ryan and she always has looked beautiful, but it's like the culture has changed so drastically now that I think if you rewatch that movie, you're like, she looks stunningly perfect. There doesn't look like anything. Everything looks great. That's so interesting. Yeah. I was just reading, I was telling Rachel this article um, at 4.30 in the morning when I had insomnia uh, (laughs) about sort of the way that the culture has been sold on Botox and this idea that like we've, we've bought into how normal it should be to freeze your face and especially as a woman to freeze your face and especially, you know, with the Instagram and kind of commodification of it. So in the New York times, it was super interesting. And to your point, it's like now it's become so it's become so habitual to see a frozen face that we don't even really understand. Like you said, looking back, it probably looks like the most moderate amount of work done ever. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and I also, I'm just gonna throw in a little feminist kick here too, which the writer Please. wrote, which I really thought was interesting. She was like, if you think about it, freezing all these things in place is kind of taking away the female mechanism for any emotion at all. Like, which is mm-hmm. sort of interesting because as you hit the age where you would have wrinkles, you're also sort of set free to like feel whatever the fuck you want and say what you want. And then it's odd that like 
at the same exact moment, we're freezing all of those things on our faces so nobody can tell if we're sad or angry or upset. And that's why in our movie, mm-hmm. we put on gray wigs <laughs> mm-hmm. and buns. That's right. Oh, you guys, I loved it. I was that, it was so good. And that's why we wore <laughs> Party City gray buns. Party City wigs. They, were they Party City? Were they like no, really they, cheap wigs? They, they were cheap. They may as well have been. They I'm were, not, they were top it. shelf, not human hair. Yeah. You know, I had interviewed Rosie O'Donnell recently and she was saying she always knew she'd age into sort of the Geraldine Page roles and she's having such a great time sort of fitting into those roles because they're it, it's a it's a fun era and age and yeah. everything to to explore on screen. I don't know. Uh, no, it's true. I mean, I think for any character actress, we've been sitting around waiting to be 50 our entire lives. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. both both Rachel and I and, I, and this is a true fun fact. Uh, it, there was a show called The Real Live Brady Bunch in the in the 90s where they were like productions of full episodes of The Brady Bunch. It was a huge cult popular like all comedy thing. And each of us was in it and each of us played Alice. <laughs> and played we were Cindy. like... Twi- I played Cindy. Oh. Well, and didn't... I know Amy Poehler played <laughs> Rachel McAdams' mom in... Um, mean oh, Girls. Oh, yeah, Mean Girls, yeah. And you, Anna, right. were... Lindsay, it's like the age difference was probably nothing, but it's like crazy. Yeah. Something. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we got to talk about Christmas movies, though. So, do you yeah, either? Do you guys Get have off a favorite? Of feminism. Pass. No, I love it. Pass. I, I could honestly, we could do a full hour on this because I love it. Uh, but do you guys have a favorite Christmas movie of all time? Oh, I the I I religiously watch White Christmas, and I religiously watch The Grinch, and I religiously watch It's a Wonderful Life every single year. Um, more recently, we watch. Uh, Christmas story, I would say with the kids. And um and I and and we usually watch Elf. Oh, that's so cute. And it's a wonderful life. I love it, but I almost like I don't want to go on the emotional journey of it. Yeah, so I'm like I, I see it there, I'm like, I got this, and then I don't watch it. I watch thing. it every year. Right. But also it's my dad worked for the savings and loan industry and we owned it as a family because it has the best representation of savings and loans of any film. Uh, I don't know if you know, remember the whole scene. I mean, literally, that's why we owned it. Like, talk about uh, the wrong emotional message of the movie. <laughs> that's what people remember, though. Anna, you mentioned remember the Remember when they Grinch. try to get their money back when the building and loan closes? And he's like, yeah. I can't give it to you. It's in the house. That's yeah. what my dad was like, this is the best representation. That's this is it. Yeah. Um, wow, what's Anna, your favorite Christmas movie? I love Home Alone. Uh, you mentioned oh, yeah. The Grinch, though. And I want to, I love The Family Stone, too. It's like a newer favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Christmas and Vacation lo- to me is like hilariously fun. I love Christmas Vacation. And Love Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Love Actually. Um, wait, you mentioned The Grinch, though. You mean the original animated, not the yes. Jim Carrey one, right? Yes. Have you seen the, the Jim Carrey one? No. I mean, everything I've about it. I've seen it a little bit. Okay, Rachel, give it to me. It's unhinged, right? Yeah. I mean, I think because I'm so um, you know, attached to the original animated thing. Like, I think if you saw that without seeing the anime, you'd have a whole different... But I'm just, like, so, like, old school about how it... Yeah, it's unhinged, yeah. I used to wait up. I remember waiting for that. And all, and, and all the Rankin and Bass, too. Like, like Oh, I'm off. scared of those. No, I'm scared of those. I don't like oh, them. I love those. I oh, love no, those. they're, like, so, they still make me so happy. Heatmeister and all oh, of those. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They gave me nightmares as a kid. I, like, got really? nightmares Even from the claymation. The, oh, I love yeah. them. So I, I understand. They're a little bit chucky. They have I never some, liked the... Crossover. The nose noise that Rudolph's nose makes. Oh, that makes. makes I can see that being yeah, like nightmare. It's upsetting. Like, oh. Also, it's it's. She a, thinks I'm cute. It's a, <laughs> it's a good impression. <laughs> and the gay dentist. Oh, I got it. I got to slip my Rudolph impression every. Because well, they're gonna do the live action. They're gonna do the live action next this. year. She's I'm trying just to get in. I'm angling for that okay. one line. Yeah, this she is thinks it. I'm cute. <laughs> <laughs> please, make, please make it happen. I want to see that. <laughs> um, back to the Jim Carrey Grinch. Oh um, God, yeah. I just have to say that there is like a little baby Grinch that is also nightmare inducing. Yeah, it's yeah. like and people. I just yes. discovered this last year. People on Etsy make the baby Grinch. You guys have to look it up. I know you, you guys have okay. a lot of press. I'm sure doing today, but find some time to look up on Etsy people who make the baby version of the Grinch from the Jim Carrey Grinch, and they sell them for upwards of five hundred, six hundred dollars. But they're dolls, and they're that's the, not. I, I don't mean to be this guy, but that's not money well spent. <laughs> I don't think that's going to appreciate over time. <laughs> it's just my sense. Um, it's just my sense. What do you think is 
Do, is there a, a Christmas movie that you hate? I know I hate to talk about what we hate, but like, is there one that that comes on or something? Like, like I said, I hate the claymation thing. Is there one that for you guys is just like that's a no? Hmm. Upsetting. I can't think of one. Yeah, offhand, I can't either. Though I'm sure they're there. I don't love like just personally. I don't love the ones that fall into like hostile territory surrounding Santa. Like I like my Christmas. Hmm. Pretty uh, heartwarming. Oh, you mean like a bad Santa? Kind yeah, like of? I don't like drunk Santas and things like oh, that. Yeah. It sort of brings me down. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, that's just not my genre. But right. you know, again, I'm I'm not a straight white male, right. Right. <laughs> so there's that. Said with love and deep respect. And thank God. And thank God for that. Well, but I don't know. I mean that. Yeah. But I, I mean that's not. I, that's that's not an interesting. Yeah. Uh, what about music? Anna, oh, you like, know what one? I find what? Little Drummer Boy to be a real snooze. Mm -hmm. I don't know that one. It's a snooze. You probably mm -hmm. saw it. I like it the song. Asleep. I like the song. God, That's why you don't remember it. Have you guys, you have to also look this up. I'm giving you a list of things to look up. Look okay. up Je Jessica and Ashley Simpson singing the Little Drummer Boy on the holiday special from 2005-ish. Oh okay. my god. It's important. You are it's important. Speaking my language. All right. It's important. It's a lot uh, of have like you seen <laughs> Ashley oh, Simpson with the dark hair singing I am a poor boy too. It's like some of the best thing you'll ever see. <laughs> All right, I'm going to check that out. I love a vintage of any era family Christmas special and it's Me actually too. my dream to produce one next like the king family oh, yeah. singers yeah no I'm, nothing makes me happier I remember you had that yeah idea. i was gonna try that to pitch that idea. Well, and you have to do it too because you have this amazing holiday album that i want everyone to check out and it's both funny and great music and and it's it's just everything so i hope people check that out i, I do you have sugar and booze do you have plans to do more uh yeah, christmas well, I'm touring, music i'm touring with it this year yes for sure i mean part of the reason you write a christmas record is because it's slightly perennial but also because of the the virus we ended up pushing all of our 2020 dates till this year so i'm doing a little tour just a two-week tour with it and it's so much fun because we wrote a very you know tradi again traditional like kind of old-fashioned nostalgic swinging vibe and what i really wanted it to be able to like seamlessly fill it you know fill in with your with your ella record and your frank record when you were like whatever decorating the tree and we wrote some really fun originals that i feel kind of old-fashioned so um i i mean the goal wasn't necessarily to be funny as it was to be fun and to have a great time and play a record we have a, amazing arrangements my producer julian fleischer is really really talented arranger so we had a good really good time it's fantastic. Now, were there any uh, tropes that you guys didn't weren't able to fit into the clusterfunk Christmas? Like, was there anything that you were like, oh, man, we're trying to find a place for it? I really wanted everyone to get trapped inside a snow globe until they found the magic of Christmas. But um, it was like one step too many. I wanted there to be like a supernatural like weather event that created an outdoor experience that was like a snow globe. But I was shut down. And we also at one point had a big musical number, right? But that um, that couldn't happen due to budget and due, time. Due to finances. So then we thought of having, and we don't want to spoil this, but we'll just say we thought of instead of that doing a Christmas angel. And so yeah, we like how that we worked figured out. a supernatural intervention of yeah. some kind, a Christmas apparition, which often happens in the movies. And that's a fun. That's a fun, fun little moment. cameo for a little special special diva in our lives. I love that moment. It's so good. Uh, people are going to love this movie. Do you guys still have the SNL ladies group text? I know this is sort of like a lore for, for people like myself. Like, what's going on with this group text? <laughs> people in your community? Yeah, we're very um, aware of yeah, it and love still, it. We certainly do. We still chat. Every still, day. Yes. So Every where do day. we draw the line with the group text? Like, did it go up to a certain year on SNL? Or do we add the, the women in there as they're still on well, it? You know what? It was sort of just like we were naturally texting you know a lot of it started in my memory anyway like we all had little kids yeah so we were like what do i do when this happens like it started out for me like a lot of like kid talk practical comedy mother or advice. like <laughs> and then it kind of blossomed out from there but like paula doesn't have kids she has animals but you know um. that's true but i think that's how i first started like a few group people. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then it really it coalesced around Rachel's 50th birthday. So there was like a chat group and a bunch of girlfriends that, you know, eventually were like, we need an excuse to really have a getaway because there is this kind of deeply tribal conversation that you can really only share with your SNL sisters. And so um, we ended up going away for Rachel's birthday and that kind of cemented the, the lifelong love. 
you know, I feel like there might be some world or something where we could get screenshots of this text thread and maybe auction them off for charity or something. Is oh there God. a way you know that we I could did, do something like that? It's funny because I did think some of this would make a great, like, a coffee table book. I don't know. Maybe coffee table is the wrong word for it. But yeah, like a book. <laughs> like, well, what I mean is like, is by the way, books and coffee tables well, will be I obsolete mean is, by the time not, we do it. What I mean is it's not like a big Please pictorial. But I mean like a little like, I don't know, read it <laughs> while you're on the toilet. A turtle I would, book? I would a read it on the toilet in a second. <laughs> Give it to me now, Marshall, please. <laughs> sayings. Anyway, there has whatever. to be a, some space for it because trust me, like people like myself, like, we would love to just even like one screenshot, maybe on social media, we get something like just one screen grab or something, you know, something. I don't know. Please. There is some funny stuff. There's but... some funny stuff. There's a lot of state secrets though, too. <laughs> I would like that too. Okay. Tell me your favorite performances of the other person. Like uh, Rachel, do you have a favorite thing that Anna's done, whether it be on SNL, a sketch or anything, what's your favorite thing of hers and then vice versa? Anna has like, obviously like a very large body of work, but the thing that first strikes me when asked that is like the stuff I saw her do before I was even on the show, when I was just like watching her on my TV and thinking like, Oh my God, that woman's so funny. And that that makes me think of NPR and the, uh, well, Martha Stewart and, um, and the Bobby and Marty, um, sketches where she would sing the, the she was the middle school teachers with Will Ferrell and they would do those medleys like those are my like because those were like my, my first like imprinting as I was the baby bird seeing <laughs> the mama bird who's a year younger than me. me but anyway like that's what really like sticks with me even though she's done like so many so yeah. many things. I it's still funny, say have... oh, sorry oh. I, I just to to uh, jump on that I still say from the 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 Fabian um, Mult Mulhan is Mulcope or Mohan Cope, Mulhan yep. Cope. Um, I still say I felt that one in my filling. It was like from one of those sketches, <laughs> like the mic goes hot. And I think it was Will who says, oh, I felt that one in my filling. And it's, it's so you funny. Guys I always think are of so funny, funny, funny little ones that get stuck in your head because when all that feedback at the beginning and for some reason in a regular way, and I don't even remember when we did this, I think it was maybe on the 40th or when Will went back one time or something. I just remember saying like, I hear some sonic fuzz on the Wi-Fi. Which makes me laugh. Same thing. It's just like some random line that Paula wrote, probably. But um, same thing with Rachel. I have to say, like again, huge body of work. Huge respect for the fact that she's done a ton of work on stage and in film, and some really great dramatical work. If you see Shameless last season. So um, good. But yes. yeah, so good. But like, but at the same time, I, I have to say that maybe this is just because we've just finished doing this thing where you have to be kind of a grown up after you leave SNL, and you have to do a lot of like playing the straight woman mom and the, you know, whatever. Like there's a lot of sort of just smiling and nodding that you do professionally. So it was so fun. Every time we get together, we are sort of set each other free on the wig, wig and glasses comedy. And so my, I do maybe just cause our movie, we get to play these kind of parts. We, we did, we've done them together when we worked on a show called great news that Tina, um, it's Tracy Wigfield wrote the Tina produced and so underrated and, too. That show was I know, it's really phenomenal. Funny. Three seasons of perfection. And I know, I know a really lot of well people written. who discovered it sort of late, but it's I know. amazing. It's a bummer, but yeah, it was super fun to do that. We played sort of a, a, a Kathy Lee and Hoda pair. So anytime we can kind of lean into the giant parts together. And as a result of that, uh, just in the spirit of that, I would say that I love Rachel's sketch. I love Rachel's sketch work. I mean, obviously like everybody else in the entire world. I love Debbie Downer. I love um, Abe, Abe Scheinveld. I love I mean, the, the Boston girl. I love the the Dickensian character he used to play. Do you remember he used to play that like yeah, little Dickensian? Yeah. Um, Pip. What was it? I don't even know. It was a one-off. <laughs> Wasn't anyway. it only a one-off? Yeah. Oh, hilarious. But um, yeah, so just all of the, all of the character work the sketch and character works like yeah i I gotta say of course everyone loves debbie downer but that one with lindsey lohan in particular Uh to me that's the thing i can go back to that i know 100 percent is going to change my mood when i see 100 percent. it's like it the way that it can just shift a day around more than almost anything else in the entire universe it's like i know i'm feeling down take a couple minutes find that video online uh, and it's that just, is a great, it oh, that's shifts, so, that's a great it all, it shifts the world. Yeah. Thank but, you. but really seeing the two of you pop up in anything, it's like, I, I, of course I was raised with the two of you on SNL and I just loved that generation of, of so many amazing women like Molly Shannon, Shira Terry, yeah. the two of you, Tina, Amy. And I just feel so lucky that that was sort of my introduction to comedy and in, in so many ways, because you, you were all were just the funniest people ever the funniest people ever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. What's next? What do you guys want to do next? Like what's on the dream bucket list, career goal list? 
Mm. Um, I do want to write more Christmas stuff. I, I, I'm not just saying, not just this movie, but I want to write a Christmas special. I want to write more Christmas music. I want to write a sequel or something else with Rachel. It was incredibly fun and fulfilling to do. Um, what's on your bucket list? Jeez, the I don't Olympics? know. I gotta get a bucket list going. Um, <laughs> Travel. I'm not sure. I I need to I need to have a thing to say so that it will. The She's universe. Been, she will wants provide. to take up golf. No, I don't know. That works I would too. love to write another thing with Anna, though. That's yeah. And I actually would like to write something for the two of us as well as our all the. I would love to write something we could populate like the Wine Country cast with would be amazing. I mean, yes, please. Would you guys ever do, would you be interested in doing more like book writing stuff? Like, is that on the horizon? Because I would love to read like essay collections from you guys, more more essay collections. I, I, well, Rachel's I'm like giving you guys work to do. No, I know Rachel I has a great essay collection, yeah, but yeah. So I did one and then I, I sat down to try to do another and it just wasn't really like, I, I took one afternoon and then said, screw it. No, <laughs> no, I tried, like back then That's I enough. had this whole like story and then I had like the surprise pregnancy. Like I had like a thing happening and like now, like, I don't know, I guess I need to, she's looking for I some need pithy. another surprise pregnancy. Right. Well, we just want your, surprise. we want your thoughts on things. Like I, we love hearing the, just your thoughts on things. Like, it, I don't know that. That's so awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah I, 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 I personally fluctuate between who cares and you know, is no. there a point? And I, I, I would know, how want, dare you? I'm just saying like, if I were to write something, I would want for it to have some import or impact on people. I don't want to just write for its own sake. I love writing, but maybe, I don't know, like, I'm not sure. Well, we would take anything you guys want to write. We love it. Um, I love you both so much. I wrap up all my interviews by asking the ne- people these next two questions, and they're silly, but it's just your favorite Mariah Carey song, because I love Mariah. She's sort of the sign of the holiday season as well. Um, and then also, if you were choosing for People Magazine Sexiest Man Alive, who would you choose? Ooh. Ooh. Golly. That's tough. Oh, gosh. Um, well, Mariah Carey song, um, I'm going to say, I'm not just saying this, but... I love the song All I Want for Christmas is You. So it drives some people crazy, I guess. But I It's one of the best Christmas songs ever written. That's the one I know the most of Mariah Carey that I that I would I love this like. song on I think I don't know how many last album ago. Get the fuck out. Get the F out. Do you know that song? How, yeah, how about you how about you? Get the fuck out. Get the fuck oh, out. Wow. It's yeah, so it's fantastic because it's so understated and it's really well written but it's so exactly what you want to it, it, like pun she punches at the right moment she's a great songwriter fantastic yeah, she, amazing songwriter. writer I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, everyone knows her for her voice but amazing also i just got this ornament and it's supposed to be mariah but i don't know if you can see the oh, oh yeah it's like, okay. it's like does not look the like seems okay. so th- that's a it's major skin girl. tone mismatch p.s <laughs> Hmm, it's a bit of a mess. Anyway, I love you both. Everyone's going to check out Cluster Fun Christmas. Oh, P- uh, People Magazine, Sexiest Man Alive. You oh, guys are getting we into gonna, that. No, we're not. I'm not. I don't forget. Um, no. shoot, right now, I don't know. sexy. I know it's, they say it's Paul Rudd right now. He's sexy. Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends on the year. I would. Idris Elba is pretty high up there. I have to say, like, hard to deny. I'm going to go. This is going to be rad. This is also sort of like a weird old school call. But you know, just for our generation who doesn't friggin' age is John Stamos. It's insane how attractive that man is yeah. for his age. So the he yogurt. and Idris and I are going to get together and be a throuple. I love that. I love that. Rachel? Um, I'm just going to punt and I don't know. I don't know. I'll just join in their throuple and I don't know. We'll just have an awkward double date. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have an answer. Uh, cluster of Christmas. Who was your Christmas. call? What do you say? I like a Chris Hemsworth, Idris Elba, of course. Michael B. Jordan, I think, was maybe a oh, couple God, years yeah, ago or something. I... But to me, he's just like, oh, my God. Um, yeah, those are the the ones that immediately come to mind. I think Paul Rudd is sexy, too. Channing Tatum, I know it's some... I love Channing Tatum. Like, to me, he's got the sex appeal. When I watch Magic Mike, I'm like, the way he moved in that movie, it was just uh, revolutionary to me and he's kind of funny you have to be a little bit funny yeah he's like goofy and do you remember the sony hack like the emails leaked i always think about his emails they like i saw some website where they uh his emails were there and they just seemed so nice and fun like he just it was like all exclamation points and he's like yeah we're killing it and like those were i was like that's he seems like just a lovely nice man upbeat i love it yeah that's not gonna happen in our sony hack yeah, what a <laughs> <laughs> evil email. I love you both. I'm going to let you go. Cluster Fun Christmas, December 2nd, Comedy Central. I can't wait to see the sequel. I need it right now. So go get right into it. I'm sorry to put that on you. And everyone watch Spring Breakdown. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Throw that in there too. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you.
Merry Christmas. Christmas.